All right, afternoon, evening, whenever you guys are watching this. Um, we are gonna do a quick rundown on uh, pediatric high flow. As you guys all know, RSV and bronchiolitis has been pretty ugly this year. So um, in preparation for that, we're gonna be adding some pediatric equipment to the trucks, as well as rolling out some guidance on pediatric high flow uh, for these kids, because it's been an unbelievably powerful tool for, uh, for them. And uh, it's amazing if you can support these kids, they can keep respiratory rates in the 70s and uh, they can sort of withstand what you would think would knock them down for an extraordinarily long period of time. So we're gonna take a quick look at the equipment. Uh, you guys are all gonna get a PowerPoint and like a quick reference, uh, sort of fast facts sheet on pediatric respiratory distress um, and then also on the equipment that we're adding. So first off, these are the, uh, the three OptiFlow Junior cannulas. So we're essentially breaking this into two algorithms with two separate tracks in each algorithm. One is the OptiFlow setups and the other one is the RAM cannula setups. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through and then uh, you'll get to see that algorithm um, uh, as well. So these are the three, three of the four OptiFlow Juniors that we're gonna have. So there's a small, a medium, a large, and then an extra large. Um, so you'll see all that in the PowerPoint, uh, but we're going to talk through these setups uh, as we move through that. Additionally, we are adding a length of seven and a half, a seven foot length of O2 tubing, and this 22 female to uh, O2 stem connection, um, and you'll understand why we're adding that as well. Uh, the RAM cannulas are on there, but we just wanted to sort of reiterate that. They're, you're going to carry an orange and a blue RAM cannula. Uh, they're different sizes. The orange is bigger than the blue. Um, in each one of the RAM cannulas is also a very similar thing to that 22 female O2 stem. Is a uh, little, looks like an ET tube, the end of an ET tube, um, with an O2 stem on the other end of it. So you can hook direct, a RAM cannula directly to the wall, and you'll see that in the, uh, in the algorithm as well. If all else fails, that's our backup. Um, and then the last thing that we're adding is this uh, 10 millimeter small heated high flow uh, setup. So in this bag, just like in the adult bag, is going to be a heater pot as well as a small 10 millimeter uh, heater limb. So your lines connect exactly the same. Your blue line connects here and then back here, and then your yellow line connects to the back of it just like you do with the adult setup or, or the OptiFlow setup. Um, additionally in here is gonna be a small length of tubing just like is in the uh, OptiFlow setup that you're just gonna get rid of just like we do in the OptiFlow setup. Um, and then a connection for oxygen. Much, uh, much like this 22 female to O2 stem. This is very, very much the same. It just sits on top. The only difference is this has a uh, pop-off valve in it. So if the pressure gets too high, this will whistle and pop out so that you don't overpressurize the, the system. All right, so we're gonna talk through a couple of the setups here. Um, we are essentially setting this up with two different algorithms. If you have a kid that is on over 20 liters a minute, or is over an hour away, we're gonna use the ventilator. If you have a kid that is on less than 20 liters a minute and is less than an hour away, we're gonna use, uh, we're not gonna use the ventilator and your O2 air source is gonna come straight off the wall. So I will, uh, we're gonna start with that uh, less than an hour algorithm. So both of them, you're gonna end up setting up the heater pot. So just like we do with the adults, Spike a bag of uh, inhalation fluid, fill up your heater pot. You're going to plug it in just like you do and like just like you've been doing previously. There are essentially three high flow setups out there. You're either going to find the kid on OptiFlow, you're going to find the kid on Vapotherm, or you're going to find the kid on a RAM cannula. Ideally, we want to keep the kid on whatever cannula they're on, which is the reason we're carrying both the OptiFlow and the RAM cannula setups. We don't see a whole lot of Vapotherm. Vapotherm the only places I've seen Vapotherm is in the University of Maryland system hospitals. Um, we go there every once in a while, um, but if you find a kid on uh, Vapotherm, you're going to transition them to the OptiFlow setup. So the OptiFlow setup looks exactly the same as it does with the adult setup. It's the same tubing, it's the same wires. You connect to one side of your heater pot, just like you would with the adult setup. You connect your wires.
wires are connected exactly the same. And then on the end, these OptiFlow Junior cannulas, which hopefully the kid has an OptiFlow Junior cannula on, and the big difference here is then the cannulas, the OptiFlow cannulas that we've been carrying for adults, because they have these what are called wiggle pads. So they're little adhesive pads for either side, sticks to the kid's face, make sure as they move around, this stays where it belongs. Um, so it connects right to the end of that. Ideally, you're gonna set this up and then you're just going to connect right to the to the kid's cannula that's already on his face. Um, and there's some guidance in the PowerPoint that you guys are all going to get, um, which I think we're going to try and lay into this video as well, um, for how this gets set and uh, picking a cannula, flows, those type of things. So ideally that's what we're going to do. We're going to have the OptiFlow. It's going to connect up exactly the same. And then if you are less than an hour and less than 20 liters, we're gonna go straight to the wall. So that's where this 22 female O2 stem connection comes, comes into play and the seven foot of tubing. Instead of hooking the other side to the ventilator like, we do, like we've been doing in adults, you're just gonna hook that to one side and then you're gonna take this to the wall and you're gonna put it on whatever the kid's flow was. So if you find the kid on 10 liters and 50%, you're gonna put them on 10 liters of oxygen off the wall. We understand that we're taking them from 50% of IO2 to 100% of IO2, and that's why the hour time limit. Um, at hyperoxia for inside of an hour, not a huge deal. This has been guidance from the PICU, both, uh, or the PEDS transport team here and at DC Children's. Uh, this is how they handle it. Um, so once again, you're gonna transition the kid off of whatever flow they're on at the sending facility, and you're gonna transition them to 100% oxygen, um, at that flow rate. All right, so same same situation, you're less than an hour and less than 20 liters, and you find the kid on a RAM cannula. In this case, we're not gonna use the OptiFlow setup. We're gonna use this smaller diameter 10 millimeter tubing. You're gonna connect your wires exactly the same. So end of your blue wire goes here, other end of your blue wire goes here, yellow wire goes here, you're going to connect that to the to the one side, and then if the kid's on a ram cannula, the end of the ram cannula looks a lot like an ET tube. Um, so you're going to make that connection, and that's the reason for the different tubing is that just connects straight in there, just like you would uh, similar to an ET tube. And then you're going to go about your day, uh, hook that to the kid. We're running heat and humidity. This is where you can either. Um, Use this same 22 female uh, adapter to the heater pot, or you can use the adapter that came with that smaller tubing that has the whistle in it. You're gonna connect that on there, and then you're gonna use that same O2 tubing to the top of here, and then connect it to your wall, just like we did with the OptiFlow. You're less than an hour, less than 20 liters, so you can go straight to the wall on 100% FiO2, whatever, that, whatever flow that kid was getting, okay? All right. So now you're over an hour and over 20 liters, so we're gonna to need to transition to the ventilator. Uh, we're gonna, or not transition, but we're gonna to have to utilize the ventilator. So in that case, we'll go back to the OptiFlow setup. Once again, exactly like your adult setup, you're gonna connect your OptiFlow tubing, connect your wires again, just like you did with the adult process. And then in this case, we're gonna use the ventilator. We're gonna bring this tubing over and we're gonna to connect to the other side just like we did with the adult setup. And then you're gonna make your connections just like we did previously. That OptiFlow is gonna connect right, right up. So we wanna point out one, uh, let's call it an idiosyncrasy or one concern is, oh, pushing the wrong buttons here. So you're gonna go into high flow. Let's say the kid is on 15 liters, and we're gonna turn it down to 21% just so, so it doesn't yell, but the kid's on 15 liters. You're gonna set it up. You're gonna start ventilation, 15 liters. The ventilator has a safety mechanism built into it where if you get over 50 centimeters of water pressure, it will shut the ventilator off. So you get a high pressure, you hear the ventilator wind up and then cut off, and what you end up with is a check, check patient side alarm. It'll drop off for eight seconds, and then the flow will start back up. I don't know if you guys heard that click. 
as the ventilator kicked back up. So you're going to get a check patient side alarm, and the ventilator is going to restart as long as that occlusion's been uh, been cleared. If you get that repeatedly, we can transition. You're going to need to call medical direction and say, hey, I'm this far out. I want to transition to the wall flow because I'm repeatedly getting um, occlusion alarms on the ventilator. That is most likely a result of a couple different things. Either the kid is coughing, screaming, creating enough back pressure that he's forcing um, back pressure flow against the, the cannula. Your cannula is too small or your flow is too high for the cannula that you've got, right? The cannula is seated too deeply or the flow is too high for the cannula. You need to go up to a higher, a bigger cannula. Um, but that's, once again, something you can call the clinical lead, call the medical directors, and they can help walk you through potential options for fixes on that. Um, but have an idea of what you're, what you're calling them for. This is what I've got. Um, so just something to know. Uh, we can run into this issue anytime we're using the ventilator. It's just a safety mechanism. And if it happens once or twice, not a big deal. It's going to cut off for eight seconds. It'll kick back on as long as that um, occlusion's been, been cleared. Now, if you repeatedly get that, then you have to figure out another option. So I'm going to put this in standby. All right, so you find the kid. That's if you find the kid on an OptiFlow. Let's say we find the kid on a RAM cannula. It's going to be the exact same setup as we did uh, previously when we were inside of an hour and less than 20 liters. We're going to connect this up. Heater wire or wires are on there exactly the same. You're going to connect to your RAM cannula. And once again, you're just going to dial in whatever the, whatever the flow is on the ventilator. You're flowing your FiO2 just like you've done with the adults, and it runs through exactly the same. Okay? If, oh, last, last uh, option here is to get rid of the ventilator and get rid of the, the heater. If your heater breaks, your ventilator breaks, you're completely, all of your equipment doesn't work. What you can do is you can take, get out of my way. Like I said, in the RAM cannulas, there is this little ET tube, uh, 22 millimeter adapter that will connect right to the end of your RAM cannula. You're going to take your oxygen tubing, you're going to connect it here, and then you're going to go straight to the wall and put the kid on whatever flow rate they were on. So if they were on 10 liters, you're gonna put them on 10 liters, 100% oxygen. You are bypassing all of the heat and humidity, so this is not something you're gonna to wanna to do for a long period of time. This is gonna be an emergency fix. Um, Scott and I were talking about this. He said, I, I think about this as I think about like the, the uh, eye gel. It's our rescue airway. This is our last ditch effort to get the kid here with the respiratory support that they need. So. Those are all your options. If you have any questions, let us know. Take a look at the PowerPoint. Take a look at the fast facts uh, sheet that will be coming out with this video. Um, and please don't hesitate to uh, grab one of the leadership team, the education team, and uh, we can help run you through uh, any questions and answer any questions about this stuff. All right. Thanks, guys.